Professor Messner here, and I wanted to give you an overview of the last part of chapter 22 and the first part of chapter 23 in the Rourke text. The part of chapter 22 you're going to be reading this week really talks about two things intensely. The first one is Woodrow Wilson's post-war vision. In the speech he gave uh, that talked about the 14 points, Wilson announced his plans for the post-war world, and he was doing this even before the war had ended. It was the final point, the creation of what would call, be called the League of Nations, that Wilson was counting on to secure his vision of a peace that would last for all time. Wilson made a mistake, though, because he didn't allow any Republicans to go with him to Paris to negotiate the treaty to put an end to the war. It was almost as if he didn't want to hear what the other side was saying. So naturally, the Republicans were totally opposed to Wilson's treaty once he got home. And when the treaty did come to the Senate floor in March 1920, it was six votes short of the majority it needed to pass. So as a result of that, the United States never joined the League of Nations, and Woodrow Wilson passed away without seeing that vision come true that he had had. You may not care, but I do want you to at least think about that as you're going through uh, the last part of chapter 22. The other thing that that chapter really talks about is the idea of modern warfare. And I'm not talking about a Call of Duty episode. Most of you have heard of trench warfare, and you probably associate it with World War I if you have heard of it. What you may not have known is that the new technology that was used by both sides uh, to try to break the stalemate that came out of trench warfare. The best example of that was the submarine, mostly used by the Germans, that threw the Allied commanders completely for a loop and sent them scrambling for some sort of way to fight back against it. It, the text also talks about tanks, chemical weapons, airplanes, the advances that transformed World War I into a modern war fought for unlimited ends with terrifying weapons. When you get to chapter 23, I hope what you're going to see in the passage you're going to read this week is that many Americans, maybe most Americans, really just wanted to forget about the previous decade. Warren G. Harding knew exactly what he was doing when he promised a return to normalcy in a speech he gave while he was running for president in 1920. He knew that the country was tired of unprecedented destruction. He knew that the, the country's businesses were tired of progressive reform and the intrusion that was into the workplace and the private sphere. But even more than that, he knew that Americans were terrified of the threat that socialism represented, particularly when you consider the fact that Russia, which had been around for maybe 500 years as a monarchy, within the space of two years went to a communist state. No wonder people in America were so scared about that. Well, Harding introduces policies that are going to try to assuage a lot of those fears. By 1922, the country has recovered from its post-war slump, and it's really entered a period of really strong economic growth. The best example of that that you're going to see this week is how Henry Ford's successes with his car industry uh, were really benefiting big business and Americans at the same time. Okay, that's this week's readings. I'll see you soon.